right now on five on your side at 10. Warm Wednesday. The change is coming though in about 48 hours that'll have you making another wardrobe adjustment. Tonight, cross country for a cause. After eight months, he's halfway. The reason for his 3,000 mile journey. But first tonight, hours before the Blues game, a man shot in the head outside of Enterprise Center. Police confident it's caught on camera. From Enterprise Center, from the Real Time Crime Center and the Metrolink, we have plenty of video down here. Tonight, Blues fans are reacting to the violence that unfolded hours before tonight's game against Tampa Bay. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live outside Enterprise Center with the latest on this investigation, Brent. And getting folks downtown, that's been the goal of city leaders for quite some time now. They say it actually helps deter crime. But when it happens, will that keep people away? I spent the evening talking with Blues fans. Police rushing to 14th and Clark Tuesday just before four in the afternoon. A gentleman was standing on Metrolink prop property and another gentleman approached him apparently with a gun. There was a struggle between the two men who knew each other, followed by gunfire. The victim grazed in the head. Police were focusing much of their attention here at the Civic Center Metro stop directly across from the entrance of Enterprise. Just two hours later, we returned to the scene. We're going to a Blues game. A crowd of fans heading to Enterprise to catch the game. I'm from St. Charles and uh, you know I grew up coming to these games and now that I live out here as an adult in the city, it's to me, it's wonderful to see all these people coming out here. I was just down here for the Metallica concert. She lives in Afton and was not aware of the shooting. It's always awful and makes you feel bad. You shouldn't let it from affecting you from doing things. It can be rough. It can be rough. A point not lost on this guy. We hear gunshots on a weekly basis. We don't change our lives because of it. I feel perfectly safe. We come downtown in Soulard area a lot. It's just a part of living part in of city life. the city. P uh, police actually recovered a gun from the scene here. They took someone into custody for questioning. The victim in this case is expected to be just fine. We're live in St. Louis tonight. Brent Solomon, five on your side. Tonight, authorities say they know the identity of Clayton's first homicide victim in nearly 20 years. The St. Louis County Medical Examiner has identified him as a 41 year old man. The major case squad is withholding his name out of respect for the family's wishes. The man was shot early yesterday morning in the area of Wydown and Glenridge Drive. Investigators now have surveillance video of the crime. One neighbor says she heard the entire thing after being woken up by gunshots. I actually heard the gunshots um, and at 515 in the morning and then I immediately heard sirens I knew the police were coming and it's it's really sad it was just kind of so out of the ordinary to see a crime scene investigation on Wide Down Boulevard if you have any information about this crime police ask that you call a tip line that number you can see it on your screen 314-955-0817 Charges have been filed against a Manchester man for a downtown road rage incident. And tonight, police are still looking for that man. Today, prosecutors charge John Jacob Ellinger with first degree assault and unlawful use of a weapon. According to court documents, Ellinger pulled a man out of his car at the intersection of 10th and Clark last month and beat him. A witness then told police Ellinger followed him and fired shots as he drove away. Ellinger is currently on a parole for an incident back in May for slashing someone's tires. Police have identified a young woman shot and killed in East St. Louis on Friday. Police were called to State Street around 7.30 Friday morning. That's where they found 19-year-old Trinity M. Bateman. Police say she got into an argument and was shot. Police are still investigating the shooting, and they have not yet released any details about a possible suspect. Tonight, St. Louis police need your help as they search for burglars who hit a Dutchtown barber shop. The thieves got away with thousands of dollars of equipment from Cuts by Curtis. As Robert Townsend reports, they are tools employees need to do their job. For more than 20 years, Curtis York has run this barber shop here in the Dutchtown area. He says he's never been hit by burglars, but that all changed during the early morning hours on November 5th. Uh, my door was open and I saw the, the locks broken. 
York told police surveillance cameras caught these two guys on video after they pried open his front door and broke inside his shop near Cherokee Street and Nebraska. He says the burglars stole thousands of dollars worth of equipment his employees need to do their jobs. York replaced some of the stolen items, but the bold crime has impacted the neighborhood business in many ways. Thousands of dollars worth of clippers. No, these are professional grade clippers, three, four hundred dollars a piece. Uh, you know, some guys had seven, eight, nine, ten pairs on their on their station, so they took a hit. The vibe in here has definitely been different. We 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 all been a little unsettled, and uh, with me, um, just. I'm just watching more carefully now. York says after the barber shop break in, the two burglars took off in an SUV that pulled up after the crime. Meantime, St. Louis police hope people will closely watch these surveillance photos. And if you recognize these guys, call the department. In Dutchtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. The disappointed barber says the alarm on his business failed during the burglary, and he has since replaced that system. Hundreds of thousands of people were at the National Mall in D.C. today for the March for Israel, and more than 300 of them were from the St. Louis area. Here at home, hundreds more were watching. The Jewish Federation of St. Louis hosted a rally watch at the Jewish Community Center. Many say they were showing solidarity with Israel and condemning anti-Semitic attacks throughout the country. Like we're connected at the heart that we know they're there experiencing it and representing us all, but it's like they're a piece of us and they're there and our hearts and our minds are with them as well. The opportunity to be able to partake in something that really is historic. I mean, the last time that this really happened was 1987 with the rally to free the Soviet Jews um, when 250,000 people came um, to Washington for that as well. The Jewish Federation of North America says there were nearly 200,000 people at the rally in D.C. For the 12th year in a row, St. Louis is being singled out for its policies protecting members of the LGBTQ plus community. The Human Rights Campaign Foundation recently released its annual Municipal Equality Index. That measures how inclusive city laws and policies are for the LGBTQ plus community. St. Louis got a perfect score. A statistic it shares with close to 120 other cities across the U.S. But according to the foundation's president, Kelly Robinson, the index is more than just a report card. It also measures the progress in the fight against laws discriminating against LGBTQ plus people. And the index has two jobs. First, it gives us a snapshot of how much a city or town supports LGBTQ plus equality. Think of it as a window into their values. And second, it provides a roadmap for mayors, for counselors, for administrators to show them how they can protect LGBTQ plus residents and staff even better. St. Louis was praised for hiring advisors for advancing rights for the community, passing laws against discrimination, and fighting back against discriminatory state laws. There's a couple of ramp closures along I-70 over the next couple of days and possibly weeks you should know about. In St. Anne, the eastbound exit to Cyprus is closed until 5 a.m. tomorrow morning as crews finish up some pavement repairs. The westbound ramp to Cyprus is closed tomorrow from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. Thursday. And over on the Illinois side, the ramp heading eastbound from I-70 to I-64 will be closed for about four weeks. That starts today. IDOT says this is needed to complete bridge repairs. That ramp will, will reopen briefly for the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Pedestrian safety has been top of mind for St. Louis elected officials, and now one man fighting for that cause is making a difference one step at a time. He's more than 200 days into his journey, and new tonight, Five in Your Science's Laura Barcheski caught up with him during his stop in our city. Laura. Mike and Ann Holder, Holden Minor Ringer is making this walk to raise money for America Walks while also raising awareness of the difficulties pedestrians face across the country. Holden Minor Ringer is on a journey to make a difference one step at a time. I was studying for an uh, exam back in uh, 2021. I was looking out the window wishing I could kind of be anywhere but there uh, in some ways, but just kind of as a form of procrastination, I just started uh, Googling, oh, walking across America, or what would it be like to walk across America? And uh, yeah, just kind of the seeds were planted in that moment. And he watered those seeds until they bloomed into reality. I just started preparing, planning, uh, talking to people who had walked across the country, did a lot of walking myself, did a lot of camping, 
And uh, yeah, and now we are 236 days into walking uh, across America. Ringer has had his fair share of challenges walking through Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Kansas, and now Missouri. One of the things I'm doing is uh, raising money for America Walks, which is a national pedestrian advocacy organization, mostly just because for me, like the most dangerous thing that I deal with every day is just dealing with cars and having unsafe, unwalkable places to be. So, you know, in that way, the advocacy is kind of built into the activity. He says the people he meets on the journey are the best part of the trip. They have made the trip. I mean, America is much more the people than it is the land. Including podcast host Dante Barger. This is my degree and this isn't my degree. Welcome to the show. Barger says talking with Ringer comes at a time in his own life where he's walking more and more, truly seeing the importance of discussing pedestrian safety. My car was stolen in October, so I have just become another pedestrian. So I'm like hyper aware of like, you know, the walkability of the city and living in the city, I've realized that um, yeah, cars, you got to really watch out for them because there are a lot of different drivers here in the city. Ringer says along the way, he's also sowing the seeds of safety into each conversation. I would also recommend people go walk in their neighborhoods because it's like you don't need to, you know, walk across the country to experience, you know, uh, what it's like to, you know, be a vulnerable road user. Ringer says he'll be here all week before he continues his journey with the final destination of Washington, D.C. You can follow along online and donate to that cause at the link we'll have on KSDK.com.